Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So last week we kind of had Ixalan week, and this week is going to be Ixalan week part two. So we did talk about modern yesterday with the sweet bat and control list, but for the rest of the week we're going to be delving into some more new Ixalan inspired decks for standard. And last week we talked mostly about dinosaurs, some other sweet stuff, but this week we got a bunch more tribes and cool things to talk about. So today, for type two or standard Tuesday, we're jumping into it with pirate aggro. This is basically a red black aggressive pirate list just barely splashing for a bit of blue comes to us from Sainan who took it to a top 8 finish in a small Japanese tournament so congrats to Sainan on a super sweet deck a quick reminder before we break down pirate aggro for Ixalan standard if you enjoy this deck and you want to see it main to videos take a minute click the like button the subscribe button leave a comment anything you can do to support your deck because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being main to videos next week so pirate aggro is basically a curve deck we're looking to start on turn one curve out with the best most aggressive pirates possible up to four mana use the tribal synergies of pirates to kind of support our plan close out the game so what i'm trying to say is it's basically a very traditional tribal build of pirates our one drop is rigging runner you probably noticed no siren storm tamer that's because we're very heavily weighted towards red and black and we don't really have the ability to cast a blue one drop all that consistently so rigging runner is a unique card it's actually not very good on turn one as just a 1-1 one, one first strike however it's a very strong one drop if we can trigger raid which creates this weird sort of dichotomy where we have to decide are we going to cast our rigging runner as kind of an underpowered one drop or do we hold on to it and make it a overpowered one drop but a little bit later in the game after we trigger raid regardless this starts off the curve on turn one we follow it up with a bunch of aggressive two drops dire fleet captain is the most aggressive of the bunch when we can get a bunch of pirates on the battlefield be attacking with all of them it can easily hit for four or five damage which is a ton for a two drop fathom fleet firebrand gives us another interesting two drop didn't really expect to see this one in constructed but like i said we're weighted towards red and black so this is one of the best options available. It does allow us to pump in the late game, make it even bigger. And then Kite Sail Freebooter gives us a way to protect ourselves against opposing Wrath, which would be very good, Sweltering Sun, Settle the Wreckage, Fumigates, or even just targeted removal spells by pulling something out of our opponent's hand. Also, since it has flying, works well with Dire Fleet Captain, easy to attack with the flyer to pump the Dire Fleet Captain when it's attacking. So those are our two drops. Our three drop slot might be the most powerful slot in the deck. Captain Larney Storm doesn't look all that powerful at first glance, but it's essentially a 3-2 haste since we can always sacrifice the treasure token if we want to to pump it up, or it just makes us some extra mana, allows us to do some explosive things. We can Captain Larney Storm, attack with it, get the treasure token, sack the treasure token, cast a one drop or a removal spell off of the mana from the treasure token. Super sweet with Fatal Push since we can attack with it, sack the treasure, trigger revolt, Fatal Push a big blocker, get in even more damage that way. So we got some really sweet potential with Captain Larney Storm. Being legendary can be a bit clunky, but still, a very powerful threat in a pirate deck. And then Rune Raider, one of my favorite cards, gives our deck a way to just keep drawing cards, drawing cards, drawing cards. It's our piratey version of Dark Confinant. Draws the first card right away as long as we attack with something, which in this deck, which is all about attacking and being aggressive, we likely would have. And then it just gives us this steady stream of card advantage to make sure we don't run out of action. Topping off our curve we have hostage taker which is one of the reasons for us to be blue it's a little expensive for a deck that is so aggressive but it is one of the most powerful cards in standard another way to just get a blocker out of the way comes down steals our opponent's best creature if we get to untap with it we can even cast that creature add it to our side of the battlefield super good in the deck fell flagship is essentially our pirate lord in vehicle form gives all of our semi-small pirates plus one plus zero plus if we ever get to get in with it on an empty 
board. It kind of goes Hypnotic Spectre on our opponent, makes them start discarding cards. So a pretty interesting vehicle if we're playing a ton of pirates in a deck. And our deck has 23 pirates, which is a pretty high number. Lookout's Dispersal might be the biggest pirate payoff in Standard. With so many pirates, we basically just get a spiced up, slightly better version of Mana Leak. And Wizards doesn't print Mana Leak in Standard. That's a card that they haven't shown a willingness to reprint. But if you're playing pirates, you get your very own Mana Leak. Gives us a way to stop Wrath, stop Chandra, stop Approach of the Second Sun, support our aggro pirate plan, kind of go on the tempo-y beatdown type plan, using Lookout's Dispersal to stop anything that will disrupt our aggro win. As far as removal, Fatal Push, like we were talking about with our treasure from Captain Larney Storm, super strong in our deck. We can trigger Revolt with the treasure, kills blockers in the early game, cut to ribbons, really powerful. Gets rid of most things by dealing four damage, and then... While we don't have a ton of mana in this deck, and we're not ramping or anything, the Aftermath effect is a way we can get in the last three points, four points of damage, close out the game if the board gets gummed up, and then Unlicensed Disintegration, we have Fell Flagship, we have the Treasure from Larney's Door, can deal three damage to give us a bit more reach, also just kills anything for three mana, kind of our Terminate, so to speak, in Standard. Mana base-wise, we get a bunch of the Buddy Lands, the reprinted Ixalan Corset Lands, Drown Catacomb, Dragon Soul Summit, three Unclaimed Terror to help us cast our pirates, a bunch of basic lands. In the sideboard, we get a bunch of discard. Two duresses, three harsh scrutinies, one mana plays gives us something to do early in the game. And that might be one of the biggest weaknesses of pirates right now, is we only have a single one drop in a deck, which I would like more for being an aggro deck, but these cards from the sideboard do give us something to do on turn one. Gifted Aetherborn to help against aggro decks like Ramen Ompred. Fiery Cannonade gives us a one-sided Pyroclasm, Pyroclasm, and can sweep away a whole bunch of our opponent's stuff, clearing the way to keep attacking with our pirates. More Hostage Shakers, great at stealing dinosaurs and bigger creatures, getting blockers out of the way. A Braid if we run into artifact matchups. Spell Fears for additional protection against fumigates and settle the wreckages and that's pirate aggro for standard and that's our instant deck deck for today so thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i will talk to you soon thanks for watching the video if you enjoyed it help us out by clicking that like button down below and to keep up on all the latest and greatest click that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos and if you want to check out some of our other sweet videos here and here